I have my exam in one month and recently there are a lot of updates, especially templates are banned. So what should be my ideal approach if I want to get that 90 overall in the next one month? And if you belong to this category, then trust me, today's video is that video. It gives you complete insights on the new approaches, new templates to respond to the new update. If you want to make most out of this video, make sure you watch the video till the end. Hey everybody, Nakul here from Skills PT Academic. Really hope everybody is doing fantastic. I'm back with yet another super awesome pop packed video on the PT strategy to score 90 out of 90 in the next one month, precisely from 10th December to the January 10th. Before we begin, if not subscribed to this channel, kindly click on the subscribe button. Anytime you need online assistance, it's a paid assistance. You can check the information in the description of this video. We left a WhatsApp link. You can click on the link, send us a message. We will do the need for you. All right, without any further delay, let's straight away get right into the new strategy to score that 90 out of 90. First thing first, let's talk about the latest update that has taken place since November 4th, 2024. The first update is templates are banned for describe image and retail lecture, especially for PT academic and not for PT core. Keyword templates are banned for essay writing and summarize spoken text. The third one being if the software is unsure, it will trigger a manual review. So with these three updates, let's also understand if the exam is going to be difficult starting 2025 January. And also we're going to talk a complete end to end, a strategized plan to get that 90 in a month in this video. First thing first, PTE read aloud, are there any changes? Not much of the change, but especially one line reading in the read aloud. I never told people to do this and even now I'm telling you avoid using this. Some are getting, some are not getting. It also depends on lot many factors. So if you are thinking to go with reading one line in your read aloud, you are at risk. You may get it, you may not get it. Mostly you will not get it. So avoid using it. So how many minutes should I practice for the read aloud? It's very simple. You don't have to practice one hour or two hours. 10 to 15 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day or 15 minutes a day. It's more than enough. 10 read aloud practice questions. Absolutely fine. But when you practice the read aloud, there are multiple things that you need to keep in your mind. The very first thing is to add naturality, meaning you need to speak in the read aloud the way you talk to your friend. There should not be any fumbles. There should not be any hesitation. There should not be any intonation. You need to keep your speed similar to what speed you would end up speaking in a natural scenario, meaning not very fast, not very slow. Go at a natural, comfortable, rhythmic speed. This is what you need to practice for the next one month, 10 minutes a day, whenever you practice read aloud. Also make sure when you're practicing read aloud, if there are one or two different words that are actually posing your problem meaning you're not able to be fluent you're pausing multiple times because of this one or two difficult words then make sure whenever you practice this 10 minutes a day on an everyday basis make sure to speak fluently by skipping this one or two difficult words not like four or five words one or two difficult words you can definitely skip so whenever you practice practice for this thing as well last but not the least if your pitch has a problem meaning if your pitch is below 130 or 120 for a male candidate or below 200 hertz for a female candidate it's time you increase your pitch not by shouting when you shout definitely your pitch increases don't have to shout make your voice a bit thinner if you're speaking market research is a vital part you can little thin it something like market research is a vital part of the planning a little download voice pitch analyzer for android phone or voice tools for your iphone or any other pitch app is fine you just download the pitch app and just check what your pitch is with respect to your voice using these apps if it is 120 180 for a male candidate you need to increase it to 140 and above. Don't increase it to 200 and above. A little sharper tone would do this 140, 150. Mine is 140, 150. If you're a female candidate, if your voice is very thick, you need to sharpen it to make it come above 200. Let me now show you one read aloud on how to speak. This is the way you're going to practice on an everyday basis for 10 minutes a day, more than enough. The environment we live in is constantly changing and with it, so are the challenges we face. Climate change, pollution and deforestation are pressing issues that demand immediate attention. Each of us has a role to play in protecting our planet. At a constant speed, I'm not going fast, I'm not going slow. If you think I went fast, maybe little you can reduce it, but not completely too much. Reduction in 
the speed will result in the fluency being 40 or 50. Read aloud is evaluated with respect to three components, fluency, content and pronunciation. But know that it's the fluency that wins the race over all other things. After doing all these things, let's say still you're struggling with your read aloud, meaning you're not able to go at a monotonic rhythmic speech. You speak and you fumble like the environment we live is in, in is con constantly changing and with it something like this is happening. Definitely marks not gonna come. So what is the easiest way out on an everyday basis when you practice the read aloud for 10 minutes, two minutes additional meaning from 10 minute to 12 minute, two minute additional. You just have to visualize. This is called visualization technique. Whatever you visualize, same thing will enact. Same thing will reflect upon your day-to-day -day life activity. So here you're going to visualize as if you're speaking perfectly fine. You're speaking in the read aloud without any fumbles. Some may not believe in it, but trust me, this technique will definitely work. Whatever you believe here, the same thing will happen. But the belief should be very strong. So try visualizing that, you know, you're speaking very perfectly without any fumbles, fluently in your read aloud, at least for two minutes a day. The same thing will enact, same thing will come forward when you practice. Over the time, this gets applicable. If you're really struggling, then adopt this method of visualizing. Definitely helps you get that quick improvement in a very short interval of time. Now we move on to repeat sentence. Repeat sentence, yes, 30 marks towards your speaking and 30 marks towards your listening. Read aloud, 35 marks towards your speaking and 35 marks towards your reading. But repeat sentence is speaking 30 marks and listening 30 marks because you're listening and then you're speaking. The plain audio, you have to speak exactly as it is to get full marks towards your speaking and listening. This is what is written in the scorecard. But another factor is also written. Even if you repeat 50% of the content, you're not going to get zero. You're mostly going to get same marks um, as that of, you know, reading or speaking the full content. Meaning for lengthy audios, you speak only 50 to 60%. If there are 13 word audio, you speak seven to eight words should be more than enough. For a short audio, like five, six words audio, you speak perfectly because for five, six word audio, don't speak two, three words. At the end of the day, it is the fluency that wins the race over the content. Remember here, psychologically, what we think, if I speak every word correctly, that is in the audio, I have to get full marks. Absolutely no. We have seen instances where people have spoken all the words correctly, but marks is zero because they have fumbled two, three times. They have taken multiple pauses. They are hesitating. They are not opening the mouth clearly. They are going very fast. They are going very slow. So it's the fluency that wins the race. Whatever the way you spoke in the read aloud, the same way you have to speak in repeat sentence, or you can speak like the speaker. You can imitate the speaker, not with respect to the accent. You can have your own accent, but try to speak fluently. The fluency means no fumbles, no hesitation. It should just that, 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 full stop. This is the one that matters the most. So if you're speaking all the words correctly, but if you fumble three times, it's going to be big zero. On the other hand, you listen to the audio less and spoke only less, meaning 13 word audio, you listen to only first eight words and spoke the first eight words perfectly by being fluent. You still stand a chance to get full marks towards your speaking and listening. Also from our experience, you skip the first part, like first three, four words and speak the rest of the words. Then also you don't get the marks. First phrase or first part is very, very crucial for the software to understand what you speak. So always make sure not to skip the first part. I understand first part is a little difficult for some people due to accent problem. If that is the case, you have to start watching a TV series English or listening to our English podcast to get familiarized with the accent. This is the only way out. So if you're really struggling and repeat sentence because you're complaining, I'm not understanding the audio, then all you got to do is along with 15 minutes of repeat sentence on an everyday basis, you have to listen to a podcast for at least 15-20 minutes a day in combination with these two things will happen on its own. So 10 minutes of read aloud and 15 minutes of repeat sentence. Now we are heading towards describe image. Describe image was always an easy one earlier because we always followed a template and finished it off in style. Not worried about the content, nothing. It was the most easiest section, at least for those who are following me. But now it's not the case because templates are being banned. If you are found using templates, meaning a complete templated responses or a response wherein you are not trying to speak something on your own. Everything generic lines, the template will automatically cover. Or you're using a template 
and the blanks you're filling with one word, one keyword, one keyword, one keyword, or you're giving a mechanical kind of response like the image has beautiful colors, red color is there, green color is there, something like this. All of these are going to be flagged by the software for a review by a human evaluator. And when human evaluator comes and gets to know this, definitely he gonna rate you zero, zero marks, zero content, zero fluency, zero pronunciation. So with this thing in place, what we gonna do? We gonna rely on a new structure. So what is this new structure? You're gonna start with introduction, something like the image provided is a bar graph, line graph, process chart, whatever that gives information about. Read whatever is there in the title. Then we're gonna paraphrase it. Remember it's a structure, this is not a template. Introduction, then paraphrase. Paraphrase is you're gonna talk something more about the image, um, probably from the title or whatever you see or, or whatever is very much evident from the image like x-axis talks about the y-axis talks about but few of the images do not have x-axis y-axis in such a case you can just ignore the second line then comes main details wherein we're gonna invoke three main ideas firstly it is evident that conversely another interesting point is these three lines of the structure you're gonna fill it with three different sentences you can make your own sentence one sentence for each line or two sentences for each line it's up to you you can describe whatever you see from the image, but don't be too hell-bent, too adamant on giving the great idea. I give the best idea possible, I'm gonna get 90. No. Whatever you can see or whatever you want to speak from the image, you do it. Even if you misinterpret by mistake, it's totally fine. My grammar goes for a toss, totally fine. Because grammar, there is no marks in your describe image. It is just being evaluated with respect to fluency, content and pronunciation. There is no grammar, there is no logic. Make sure to speak something from the image. Even if you are not able to understand anything from the image, speak something from the image. Some of the sentences that you speak should correlate with respect to what you see in the image. It need not be a great idea, it need not be the best idea. Even a worst idea is fine as long as you speak from the image. After the three main details or the three main key ideas, so you're going to conclude saying overall this image illustrates. Read the title or whatever you want. But throughout this, remember one thing. People often end up fumbling a lot because they're focusing into the image and speaking. When you focus on something and try to speak, you're going to fumble. Because when you pay attention to one task, it's very easy. If you're paying attention to fluency, you're going to rock in the fluency. If you pay attention to the content, you're going to rock in the content. But if you pay attention to two different things at once, this is not just like read aloud. You are trying to you know, calculate few things. You are using this and then sending it to the tongue to process it and then speak. Two things are happening at the same time. So as a result, what people end up doing, 90% of their brain's capacity, they give it to content. 10% they give it to fluency. This is psychologically is what happens to you the moment you look at the image. You should absolutely do the reverse of it. 90% give it to the fluency, 10% on the content. Let me just show you how I would do it by looking into this image. The image provided is a pie chart that gives information about number of participants per game across Monopoly, Candyland, Jenga, Chess, etc. It is evident that for the Candyland, 23% of the participants actually play this, whereas 21% of the people play Monopoly. Conversely, only 7% of the people have chosen poker and 4% of the people have chosen Twister. It should be Uno, but I told Twister should be fine. Another interesting point is Jenga and Chess have been occupied with 11% of the participants and 15% of the participants respectively. Overall, this image illustrates the number of participants per game across Uno, Poker, Twister, Chess, Jenga, Candleland and Monopoly. I'm just trying to be fluent. I intentionally spoke something wrong. Don't do it intentionally. By mistake, if it happens, don't come back and correct it. It's okay. Grammatically, I have a problem. It's totally fine. Grammar is of no relevance with respect to the evaluation. If you focus on these things, unwanted things, you cannot be fluent. If you're not fluent, you're not going to get marks. It's fluency that wins the race over the content. Earlier, content was never there in the competition. Now, the content has just crawling and coming in but it's still the fluency that wins the race over the content remember this there could be four or five images that could come in the exam is one template be sufficient for all definitely yes one is enough don't have to use multiple templates tested thoroughly people are getting the scores you don't have to worry so how many questions do i need to practice on an everyday basis 10 questions 10 to 15 minutes more than enough read aloud 10 minutes repeat sentence 15 minutes Describe image 10 questions. It should not take more than 10-15 minutes because 25 seconds preparation time, 40 seconds is the time duration with which you need to speak. 25 to 30 seconds, 30-32 seconds.
seconds is more than enough. Don't speak till 40 seconds. Well, if you're confident, you do it because the more you speak, the more mistakes you make. Don't mm -hmm. also speak only for 20 seconds or less because they've clearly mentioned in their website that it is impossible to process the information in just 20 seconds. And if someone is doing it in less than 20 seconds, marks will go down. So try to at least be 30 seconds would be an ideal one. But what if I've been practicing and still not able to get it? I'm fumbling, fumbling, fumbling. Very simple, the visualization technique that I told you for it aloud. Try to use the same technique here. Sit in a corner of the room with the lights turned off. Nobody in the room. Just close your eyes and visualize. You speaking the describe image without any fumbles, without any hesitations. And when you do this on an everyday basis, right, you tend to get this flow because you're visualizing it, that you're speaking perfectly. Your mind tends to believe that. And what is impossible, you thought, would be easily possible within a very short interval of time, probably three, four days or five, six days, within a week for sure. The next is retail lecture. Well, retail lecture, the old template, can I still use it? You can use it, whatever I give, as long as you write some phrases. But still, I would recommend you to use a new template. Why to simply risk it? New template, a shortened version is what I've given. Use phrases and not just keywords. You write keyword, I'm telling you, software will flag it for the review or software may itself give very low scores avoid using completely templated responses meaning template will cover everything you put one word one word one word one word or, or template will give you everything and you just have to use some keywords like keyword comma keyword comma keyword keyword comma keyword comma keyword i just have to write 10 words and my job is done all those will not give you scores you got to write phrases use the new template this lecture discusses in the beginning the speaker explained about later the speaker said here the speaker also mentioned in conclusion the lecture effectively is summarized five to six phrases the more you write the better the scores just have to fill it into the template and speak but remember when you speak don't have to worry about the grammar people go in the view of grammar getting that perfect grammar they make a lot of fumbles as a result marks will go down remember written lecture is not a high priority module hardly contribute some eight to ten marks towards your speaking and eight to ten marks towards your listening not a high priority module you should just focus practicing on note taking strategy because when you take the notes what mistake people end up doing they listen to an audio and take the notes simultaneously as a result they will not be able to listen also they will not be able to write also what you go to do is listen for five six seconds after that you decide okay this is the phrase that i'm going to write and just start writing down that small phrase and when you write stop listening because if you're writing and listening you will not be able to write and when you listen don't write because if you're listening and writing you will not be able to even listen do one thing at a time this is the strategy write some five six phrases once done 10 seconds will be given to you use the 10 seconds to prepare well using the small phrases that you have written speak the template speak the phrase speak the template speak the phrase don't try to logically mix them oh this is not making sense so with the template this line is not fitting grammatically avoid thinking about all these things just read whatever is there even if it is not making any sense just speak you're gonna get your scores two three questions a day 10 minutes a day is more than enough don't have to practice a lot for this module the next comes answer short questions no need to practice listen to the question if you know the answer tell the answer if you don't know the answer speak something relevant to that question or say something and click next this is not going to give marks we have tried and tested this we skipped this till people got 90 but is don't skip it just Try to speak something if you know the answer. If you don't know, speak something relevant or anything from the question and click next and no need to practice. You can absolutely skip practicing this section. Don't have to worry. The next comes summarize written text. Same technique as before, you're still going to follow. Whatever is there, two lines you copy paste in between, add a connector, done and dusted. Uh, towards the end, put a full stop. Connector being and, but, or, it, so. Could be anything, but put a comma and a connector. A and D, e, but beauty at so or for anything as such is fine try not to write synonyms don't use this too much if i exactly copy paste i think i'll get low scores what i'm gonna do i'm gonna write a new word in place of an existing word i'm gonna write a synonym don't do all these things your marks will go down whatever is there copy paste take two sentences in between them add a comma and a connector and towards the end put a full stop don't copy half sentence that's all summarized written text is how many questions do you need to practice on an everyday basis don't practice you know the technique directly implement ideal word count would be 35 to 40 or 40 45 or both PT core and academic should be more than enough. now let's go to an essay the update here is avoid using one word template rest all 
template covers one topic sentence you need to write or don't use this this was never working before even now it's not working definitely it's going to be flagged or even if it is not being flagged for the review software itself is capable of giving you low scores not just that avoid using keyword comma keyword comma keyword kind of templates template will cover everything you have to put some 10 keywords dash comma dash comma dash advantages such as dash comma dash or avoid all these things you got to write something on your own so the template that i have shared two templates i've shared so far both of them are working because both of them have included five planks meaning five sentences that needs to be written by you guys when you write these five sentences on your own with respect to the question make sure you mix simple compound and complex sentences so how to practice for this all right so this is the template that i've given if you see second paragraph to begin with one prominent aspect of topic is first sentence this means second sentence to quote a recent instance third sentence secondly third paragraph one notable feature is fourth sentence this is due to the fact that fifth sentence write five sentences with a mixture of simple compound and complex sentences now what to practice memorize the template on an everyday basis and these five sentences when you write there should not be any spelling or grammatical mistakes these two are the most important thing for these two you need to write these five sentences on an everyday basis. Entire template is not required. Maybe in the beginning, you start typing the entire template, but probably after two, three days, you don't need to type the entire template. It's a waste of time because you probably may not do spelling or the grammatical errors there. Where you possibly go wrong? When you type those five sentences. So take five topics, any five questions, in a day write five sentences for each topic quickly within five six minutes as quickly as possible so probably 20 25 minutes is what i would recommend and not more than that each day for the essay if you're struggling if you think no, i'm very confident of my spelling and grammar then no need to practice know the template know that you need to write five sentences on your own and finish it let me again repeat five questions you take for each question you write five sentences second paragraph three sentence third paragraph two sentence five sentence five sentence five sentence five sentence sentence if you have time if you don't have time then at least take two essay questions different topics and start implementing it but remember one secret essay will not give you 90 essay hardly contributes some 12 to 15 marks if you get two questions maybe max of 20 marks towards your writing and not 90 if you get low score after using this template a request please don't come here and comment in the video to the video saying this template is not working i got 45 writing you check your reading listening also will be 45 only or 50. so it's essay is a low priority module it's all being hyped in the social media that working templates use this template you get 90 no you don't get 90 you get 20 out of 20 if you don't make spelling mistake and don't make grammatical errors remember this now the reading module when it comes to reading section even now what is important is just reading fill in the blank and reading writing fill in the blanks choose single choose multiple answer click one answer and move on within a fraction of a second random one answer for choose single answer random one answer for choose multiple answer of course choose single answer comes in the end no need to worry but in the beginning comes choose multiple answer click one answer not to one and quickly move on it's a waste of time focus more on reading fib and reading writing fib what about reorder the paragraph reorder the paragraph is not so important just finish my reorder the paragraph part one and part two i've made the video the tips and tricks shared there is still very much prevalent very much valid so just watch those two videos 40 minute video more than enough in the exam if you can try to solve it solve it within 1.5 minute after 1.5 minutes still if you're not able to get i think this is the correct answer i think let me interchange i think this is the correct answer if you're bombarded with all these questions randomly select something randomly drag and drop something and move on it is not worth spending a lot of time because hardly it contributes four to five marks but reading fill in the blank and reading writing fill in the blanks contributes some 50 marks towards your reading and 25 plus marks towards your writing now let's plan for reading fib and reading writing FIB for the next one month 10 questions of reading fill in the blanks and 10 questions of reading writing fill in the blanks is what i would recommend if you have enough time if you think no 10 is too much man it's it crosses almost 30 40 minutes just for this then at least five questions for reading fill in the blanks and five questions for reading writing fill in the blanks will be appropriate but when you practice practice with the right approach because what matters in your practice is the approach simply practicing will give you mental satisfaction one plus one is equal to three if you're practicing every day what is the use of practicing apart from you getting that mental satisfaction that oh yes i practiced a lot today so you gotta fix the approach meaning you should not simply do with the brute force method read 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 and then select no you have to mix collocation grammar and the context now i will give you a small snippet 
on how to use the collocation method in our course we have this in detail collocation alone we have some 50 hour grammar alone we have some 30 hour context based some 10,000 questions and lot many factors if you're okay to invest time and money on a course you join our online course link in the description you can whatsapp us if you don't want then yes my video should also be fruitful meaning the youtube video should also be fruitful if you have the patience to learn let's start with one of the small collocation method that i would like to demonstrate pause the video try doing it less than two minutes post that resume the video to understand how to do it let me now help you with how to do it quickly in a close-knit community fostering is encouraging strong social you encourage something strong about social what social connections Connection should be strong. Connection is tie. Social tie is a collocation. Many would end up writing social gatherings. You don't encourage a strong gathering. You don't encourage a strong social fabric. Fabric is something that connects everything. Correct? So it's fostering strong social ties. T-I-E-S is the first one. Second one, dash community events. You host an event. Here, if you want to apply grammar, Continue reading it. It says organizing. So it's hosting something and organizing something else. So hosting the events is the second one. Third one, interest. You need to have a very good interest. You will always say genuine interest. Are you genuinely interested in learning this? Then I'll teach you. Genuine interest. Genuine is the third one. Extend the invitation to. I'm extending my invitation to the wedding, to the event, invitation, send or extend warm invitations to, collocation, send invitation to a function, to an event or to gatherings. If you do that, it strengthens the, it strengthens the fabric of the society. Fabric means something that holds all of us together, correct? So it's fabric of the society, social ties, fabric of society, they're all collocations. So Meantime, I think I missed the second one, often dash a help, lend a help. Can you lend me your pen? Lend a help is a collocation. Second is lend a help. So first one being social tie. Second is often lend a help. Third one being hosting community events. Fourth one genuine interest. Fifth one warm invitations to gatherings. Sixth one fabric of the society. So this is one of the approaches that I'm talking about collocations. Next is a grammar and if grammar and collocation both are not working, then you're gonna go with the context because context one, finding clues will definitely take time. But all the blanks will not be just based on finding clues. Some of them will be based on collocation, some of them on grammar. The rest, you take time, read along, try to understand and then do it with the context. Two and a half minute of time duration is what I would recommend to solve each question of reading, fill in the blanks or reading, writing, fill in the blanks. So whenever you're practicing reading FIB and reading, writing FIB in any website, make sure you follow this, you know, the regime that I gave you. The next is listening section. Yes, what matters in listening section is same as what used to matter in listening section. Summarize spoken text, listening, fill in the blanks, highlight incorrect words and write from dictation. Only these four are important rest you're gonna click one and move on choose single choose multiple select missing word and highlight correct summary click one and move on absolutely time based if you start solving them now let's start with summarize spoken text what template to use you can use the same template as that of retail lecture the new template that i shared or you can use my old template that i have given you but make sure to use a shortened version of a template don't use lengthy templates like the lecture gives the important key points and the relevant information about Lengthy templates should be avoided for summarize spoken text. The technique for summarize spoken text is same as written lecture. Listen for five seconds, write for five seconds. Listen for five seconds, write for five seconds. Towards the end, you will have four or five phrases. Make sure you fill the template using these four or five phrases. But in written lecture, I told you, don't worry about logic or the grammar. Here, I'll tell you, don't worry about the logic, but worry about the grammar and the spelling most most important if you want to join a course you can join us online course we can help you with the feedback but if you don't want to invest your money and time on a course then probably chat gpt will come to your rescue make sure to write 65 to 70 words if you are for pt academic or 20 to 30 words for pt core for pt academic i would recommend 65 to 68 words to be precise if you can write more more the marks because summarized spoken text contributes some 8 to 10 marks towards your listening and 8 to 10 marks towards your writing. Main problem people end up facing is the grammar and the note taking strategy. So to fix the grammar, we have a solution. Just copy whatever you've written and write this sentence, copy paste this sentence, review my write up with respect to basic grammar and show corrections in bracket. This you type to ChatGPT. I'm going to do the same now. Let's see what ChatGPT 
uh, shows. But before that, let me just review it right in front of you. The talk was about farmers in India has committed. This is a wrong sentence. The talk was about farmers in India who have committed. Because farmers in India, the talk was about farmers in India, it's an end of a sentence. Still, if you are continuing, you need to add this relative clauses. But so let's see what chat GPT comments on this particular paragraph. All right, I've already copied it. I'm just pasting it here. I'll review my write-up with respect to basic grammar. Let's see what it says. Here is the write-up with corrections. Key corrections, see farmers in India has committed suicide. Farmers in India who have committed suicide. Subject for agreement adding who for clarity. The speaker talked that debt is pushing. The speaker talked about how debt is pushing. So these are the kind of corrections that you will be getting in our course as well. But it's a manual review that will be more accurate because Pearson may not be using ChatGPT. But it could be somewhat similar to what ChatGPT is giving. Probably ChatGPT does it thoroughly with a strict correction, um, Pearson may not, or it could be vice versa. I'm not sure about exactly how chat GPT does, but yes, this is the kind of um, response you get and using this, you can actually learn how to fix your grammar and spelling. So one or two questions, probably 10 minutes of your time is enough to practice on summarized spoken text. More than that, not required, hardly eight to 10 marks towards your listening and writing, not a priority, but yes, one or two questions you can practice on an everyday basis. After this is listening, fill in the blanks, listening, fill in the blanks. What matters is spelling and your listening skills. To improve your listening skills towards the end, I'm gonna give you a written, but spelling is the most important thing here. So five questions a day if you practice, should be more than enough. I don't recommend practicing a lot because what matters is the spelling and the listening skills. So we need to have a separate routine for your spelling, learning and listening skills that I'm gonna give you in the end. But that's what listening fill in the blanks, very, very important module. It's an integrated module, meaning it contributes marks to two modules, listening and writing. Two, three questions, you can expect 15 marks towards your listening and 15 marks towards your writing, very important. If you have problem in the spelling, then definitely marks will trickle down. After this is highlight incorrect words. What matters in highlight incorrect words is your reading skills. This is also an integrated section, meaning you got to listen and you got to read in highlight. So it contributes some 12 to 15 marks towards your listening and 12 to 15 marks towards your reading. Two, three questions will come. No need to practice a lot on this. What matters is your reading skills. You got to read a bit faster, meaning you need to catch the speed of the speaker. This is the only thing that is required here. So take up a novel and start reading fast. Automatically things will fall in place. If you have time, then definitely some two, three questions you can practice on an everyday basis or you can skip it. But know the approach. It's a reading skill. If your reading skills are poor, meaning you are not able to read fast, your speed is very slow, then simply practicing is not going to make a huge miracle and difference towards your scores. You got to take a book and start reading for one hour, automatically problem fixed. After this, the last section is right from dictation. I would recommend to practice some 10 questions minimum, 10 to 15 minutes you need to give time. If possible, more questions, more you do, the more perfect you become. This module is the one that contributes some 40 to 45 to 50 marks towards your listening separately and writing separately. This is the one I'm telling you if you're looking forward to having that great score towards your immigration. Here the approach says listen to an audio and start taking some short notes. After that expand the short notes and then add extra words. Can I add extra words? I would still recommend add it man, should not be a problem. Add extra spellings, definitely yes, because the score guide says one correct word will give you one mark to listening and one mark to writing. There is no evaluation with respect to grammar, so don't have to worry, you can write in any order. But usually we don't write in a different order, we don't write in reverse order. Isn't it? You listen to audio and you write in the same order. Towards the end, you add extra words. Singular noun, plural noun, present tense of the verb like develop, past tense of the verb developed, S form of the verb develops. All these are little difficult to catch when you listen to an audio. He developed the project. Is it developed, develops or developed? Add all three. And towards the end, add some extra spellings if you have concerns about spellings. And in the end, you again have to add A, the, A, the, some articles. I went to park. I went to a park. A is not clearly heard. As a result, you will not write that, but A is there because, you know, when it's a foreign accent, they don't pronounce this A clearly. Towards the end, simply add some articles. A, the, A, the. Practice some 10 questions a day. 
that should be more than enough but along with this the most important routine that i'm gonna talk about now you got to follow there's nothing but one hour of reading activity 30 minute of listening to a podcast 15 minute of some spelling sessions if you join our course we have some big repository large repository of spelling sessions and every day we give you spelling tests but if you don't want to invest on a course then go to chat gpt and ask chat gpt to get you some spelling tests this is very very crucial at least some 15 minutes of spelling test you gotta get involved in and if possible whenever you get time play this beautiful game called duel and back at least for 10-15 minutes this is known to increase your working memory and when such a thing happens repeat sentence right from dictation becomes a piece of cake all right so in a nutshell the important things are not all the 20 modules it's the six modules that makes difference it's read aloud repeat sentence reading fill in the blank reading writing fill in the blank listening fill in the blank write from dictation these six you focus more like 10 minutes of read aloud 15 minutes of repeat sentence 10 reading fill in the blanks question if possible or 10 reading writing fill in the blanks question if possible otherwise you can reduce it to five questions of each per day and five listening fill in the blanks and 10 write from dictation this is the crux for the next one month, you're going to practice along with this one hour of reading activity, 30 minutes of listening to a podcast, 10 to 15 minutes of towards spelling test and 10 to 15 minutes of dual and back. This is the strategy that I'm giving you. And again, if you're still wondering, describe image, why have you not written it? It's still not a priority. It hardly contributes some 10 marks. So focus on whatever I gave you. The strategies and the templates for describe image should be more than enough. I really hope this was an informative content. If you really like the content, like, share and subscribe and leave your valuable comments in the comment section. With this, I'll park the video here. This is Nakul and AKUL. Nakul signing off from Skills PT. Soon we'll be back. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks much.